Are you ready? Are you ready? Turn to someone next to you and ask them if are you ready? Tell them we are a privileged people. So we are women with a lot of privileges. Come on, turn to someone, say that. All right. We are privileged in the house today. Amen. To have on my right, we have God's general. Come on, clap your hands. We have God's general among us this morning. Look at them. I know we all have experienced throughout the two days. And today is the final day. But guess what I want you to know? They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. They are all filled with the Holy Spirit. And today they are here. We know we'll be hearing from them. But today, I want you to know one of God's general. Oak will be talking to us about kingdom economics. All right? But guess what? These generals, they are all empowered. And they want to empower us. Come on, somebody. To see God's power at work in and through our very life. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. Come on, somebody. Bless the Lord. I want you to... Stand to your feet this morning. And this morning, as I welcome one of God's general, she is no other than overseer, Apostle Linda Wright. Come on, somebody. I want you to clap your hands this morning. I want you to know this woman... This woman is a mighty woman of God. She has the anointing. Come on, show the anointing. She has the power. She has the fire. She has the Holy Ghost. Help me welcome a person. Linda. Rise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. I'm excited. To be here yet again this morning. Amen. Our God is a good God this morning. He's our awesome God. Ain't nobody like him. We'll never find anybody like him. Not even close to him. Come on, somebody. Our God is the only one. And I'm so thankful for him. And I'm so thankful just to be able to talk to you guys. And thank you for the all the uh, ministers. The, uh, Everybody that's in the house of the Lord today, I'm just so thankful for you. Everybody in here is important. Hey, my God, everybody that's in here, you are important. And I don't want you to let the enemy speak to you and tell you that you're not. Hallelujah. God made you, and he made you in his image, in his likeness, and you are important to him. Hallelujah. And as it already been said, talking about women stronger than their struggles, I thank God for every struggle. Hallelujah. I thank God for every struggle. It was the struggles that made me. The Bible says, hallelujah. And if you're going to write, listen, oh, hallelujah. To reign with God, it's going to be some struggle. Come on, saint. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be some things. Don't, we can't fool ourselves. Hallelujah. It's going to be some things that happen. Amen. Hallelujah. But we bless the Lord because he's equipping us to be strong in him, to be powerful in him. Amen. Glory to God. So I, I honor each one of you. I honor the bishop. Hallelujah. Pastor and all. I guess this opportunity. So we are talking about kingdom and number. Amen. Let me tell y'all this. Out of all my years, <laughs> out of all my years, I started ministry in 1993. And I started my own ministry in 2002. Out of all my years, I've never been invited to speak on finance. First time here, first 
find the way. Amen. Hallelujah. Not that I haven't spoken on, but I've never been out. Nobody asked me on the outside. In my churches, I have spoken. But on the outside, I mean, I've never been asked. So I bless the Lord. Hallelujah. How many know that the principle does work? How many know that the principle does work? And I'm talking about the principle. I'm talking about tithing. But I'm not going to be so much on tithing today. I'm going to go somewhere else. Amen? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes when you begin to talk about money, people's whole expression changes. Their whole everything changes sometimes when you're talking about money. Hallelujah. Well, oh, hallelujah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm so blessed that God provides for me. I'm so blessed. That our God, hallelujah, mm -mm, gave us that for a reason. Amen? So today, I want to talk to you about watching your relationship with money. Because mm -hmm. sometimes our relationship with money is our problem. Amen? So that's what we're going to talk about. Our relationship with money. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. First of all, Ecclesiastes 5 and 10 says something. Most people, when they're talking about money, they go to Malachi. I'm not going to Malachi. And most of the time, when they go to Malachi, they don't even understand. He's talking to the leaders. Amen? We're not exempt. But that's who he's talking to, but we're not going to Malachi. Ecclesiastes 5 and 10, hallelujah, says, Whosoever loves money never has enough. So many words. Come on, I say, if you're in love with money, you really never have enough. You always want more. In some kind of way, you know, you feel like you always need more. So he that loves silver shall never be satisfied with silver, nor he that loves abundance with increase. This is also vanity. Tell somebody vanity. Tell somebody don't get caught up on your money. Mm -hmm. God is looking for good stewards of that which he has given unto you. Good stewards. That's what he's looking for. But many times, as I said, sometimes it feels like our life is revolved around making money and spending money. It can be a challenge sometimes to have confidence. Come on. Put our confidence in money. Can I tell you something about our God? He said, if I can get your money, I know I got you. If I can get your money, I know I got you. Mm-hmm. Come on. It, it, it's, it's real. Hallelujah. So we have to be in that place where we can let God, we can have a relationship with money, the proper, I'm talking about the proper relationship with money. First of all, the money that, whatever money you get, it's not yours. Whatever you get, it's not yours. God don't want you even to claim it as yours. But this is my money. No, it's his money. Amen. Even after the 10%, the rest of it still is his money. Meaning that I must be a good steward of the rest. Come on, saints. Hallelujah. We got to, you still got to be a good steward. There's so many verses in the Bible, you wouldn't believe it. It's probably over really 2,000 verses in the Bible that talks about money. It talks about money. Because money can make you or it can break you, really. Come on, saints of God. If you don't understand where your money is coming from and what God is doing, then with the money that you have given, what he has given you, then you will abuse the power that he has given you with that money. Tell somebody, let's don't do that. 
our tendency as, I'm going to say this, our tendency sometimes as human beings is to want more money. We want a bigger house. We want new phones. We want more uh, expensive, um, you know, positions. We, that's, it's that thing in us, want. Sometimes we just want all the time. Amen? We want all the time. But I can tell you, God put it there. He put that on the inside of us because he want the best for us. Okay? But God wants us to be in a place where we will not be driven by our want. I'm still talking about money and how we handle it and what we do with it. Amen? Before we can steward what God has given us, we need to have a healthy, he said, a healthy relationship with it. Glory to God. And it doesn't matter if somebody said, well, okay, well, you, you getting this much and you doing that. That doesn't matter. Uh-uh. It matters. Whatever you are getting, you have to have a healthy relationship. Know how to handle that, which God is given to you. Because it's really not yours. Tell somebody it's not yours. It's God's. Hallelujah. We bless him. So we are Christians and we are called to be in a place where we are in contentment, in, in, in contentment with what God has given us in each stage of our life. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's so hard, doesn't it? It's so hard sometimes trying to manage every day. But in Christ Jesus, we have to know that all that God has given us, he knows what he has given us. And he said you can make it. But there's a way, and that way is being a good steward Hallelujah. Knowing what comes first. Knowing what's needed. Tell somebody knowing what's needed. Knowing what's needed. Hallelujah. Can I tell you that the times and everything is changing? It's changing. It costs so much to live. But guess what? He said, <laughs> he will take care of us. He provides for us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. So we are called to be content in whichever stage that we are in. So we're going to look at a few verses about managing our finances. Tell somebody to manage my finances. Mm -hmm. Say, it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. Mm -hmm. That's who it belongs to. All right. So who's ever loved money? Never have enough. All right. So, mm, God, our love should be more for God than it is for money. Amen? It's more for God than it is for money. Who's ever loved wealth is never satisfied with their income. Hallelujah. Come on. Who's ever loved wealth is never satisfied with their income. They are always coming up with schemes and ways. Tell somebody we can't do that. We come up with schemes and we come up with ways. We can't do it. That it must come from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will direct us on how to make money and how to give money. Come on. Hallelujah. And he said, listen, I have put this in your hand. There's gifts and there are callings in our hands. Glory to God. Oh, God is good. Amen. So we have to be in that place. Deuteronomy 8 and um, 18 says, hallelujah. Hmm. Is it God who gives the ability to produce wealth? That's who it is. It is God that gives us that ability to produce wealth. Hallelujah. Hmm. You know how sometimes before you can do something, you have to invest. We have to invest in things. Sometimes before we can really... Coming to that, what we got, you know, where abundant place, meaning that I must first give. I first give. When I think about it, I think about the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Guess what? He came from a wealthy home. He had money. He asked for all his stuff, and, and his daddy gave it to him. But guess what? Some kind of way of form, he didn't know how to manage what he had. See, if you don't know how to manage what God has given you, 
you're going to come to a place of poverty because you don't know how to manage it. And sometimes people will say, well, especially when you have, especially when you're from America, where you got, y'all got this, y'all got that. Well, you got this and you got that too. We got the same daddy. We got the same daddy. We got the same daddy, honey. The same daddy. And we have to know that. We got the same daddy. When I walked in here, I didn't see nobody looking like property. I don't see nobody in here looking like property. That they, they ain't got it. And if you go to the right places in America, you will see some property. Come on, it's who our daddy is. And he want to teach us how to be good stewards of that which he give us. All right, so Deuteronomy, as I said, it's, it's him that give us that ability and it's him that give us that wealth. I always like to throw in my testimonies because testimonies mean a whole lot. It means a lot. A lot of people don't get up and talk about their testimonies and say what they had and what they don't have. Remember, when we're going through the word of God, this is all testimony. Apostle Paul and all of them, by the Holy Spirit, they was telling their story. We're in this season. Now, we got to tell our story. We belong to God. We tell our story. The different things that we had to suffer through, the different things we come through. The lack in our life, but yet the prosperity that God has given unto us. We are some, oh God, we are some blessed people. But you know, we're going to talk about uh, being in a, a pro, you know, in a place of property all the time. Or we're going to be pole mastered all the time. That's what we're going to get. That's what I'm going to get. I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that. Whatever condition you're in, you begin to change your mouth. You begin to, oh my God, change your mouth. Come on, I may not, I may not say it like you say it. I may not say the, the scripture like you say it. But you got to change your mouth. Because what comes out your mouth is what you're going to produce. Because the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Come on. Mm -mm. I'm prosperous. I was prosperous when I was born. Come on, I said I was prosperous when I was born. Man, hallelujah. God bless me. When I was coming up, my father, he taught us to give. He taught us to give. He taught us to give before he even got saved, before he even started know anything really about tithes and offering. He told us to give. My daddy was a farmer. And because he was a farmer, he was always giving. And he was always giving to those that was less fortunate. And me and my sisters, we thought we was poor. We did. But late on life, late on in life, we find out we were rich. That we never went without anything. How God blessed us. Hallelujah. Come on. So the prodigal son, he was rich in abundance. He had it, but he wasn't taught how to steward. We may look at it where he was young. Yes, he was young, but still, he didn't know how to handle what he had. And if we don't get a hold on the relationship that we should have with our money, meaning that that money is not ours. I don't care if we pay our 10%. The rest of it is still God's money. It's still, I must, oh, what do I do with your money? What do I do with it? Because it's important. Because if we cannot control ourselves with money, if we cannot get a hold of ourselves with the want spirit, that I want, I got to have it, then we're going to be in a place that we don't want to be in. Glory to God. We're going to be in that place. Hallelujah. Mm. 
1 Peter 5 and 2 said, don't be greedy for money. He said, don't be greedy for money. That's what it says. And he tell us that, and he's talking to the leaders when he said that, he said, Shep the, the shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, he said, as overseers, not, not because you must, but because you are willing as God want us to be. He said, not greedy for money, but eager to serve. Be eager to serve. Proverbs 15 and 27 tell us, whosoever is greedy troubles his household. My God, that's something right there, ain't it? Whosoever is greedy, he said, you trouble your household. Mm, hallelujah. We trouble your household. Mm. Whoever is greedy, trouble his household. Whoever is greedy for unjust gain, trouble his own household. But he who hates bribes will live. He will live. So we can't be in that place, hallelujah, where we are not, we don't have that relationship, the proper relationship with our funds, our money. Whatever it is, we must have a proper relationship. Glory to God. Now I'm going to tell you when I really came into a place of a proper relationship. Hallelujah, with money. Amen? <laughs> hallelujah. I worked. But I had to end up quitting my job. And I was making at that particular time maybe 25000 something like that, a year. Me and my husband both worked. But I had a child. I have a child that's special need. A special need child. He's 36 years old. 36. And if you think it's easy, it's not. But by the grace of God. I didn't put him in no home. I didn't do any of that. Me and my husband. My sisters and everybody helped me take care of him. Hallelujah. So anyway, I had to quit my job. And I heard the Holy Spirit say to me to come off my job. He told me when to come off it and everything. And I told my husband. Well, when I told my husband, that he said, well, did he tell you how we going to pay these bills? He said, did he tell you how we going to pay these bills? I said, no. You know, come on. I, I said, no. And so I went back to the Holy Spirit. I said, you heard him. <laughs> I said, Holy Spirit, you heard him like that. So two, it must have been two weeks after, because, you know, men's is a little bit different than her. He had to go talk to the boys at the job and tell them all about what I had said. Amen. So they said, well, man, you know, if you got to put him in a nurse, put, put the children in a nursery, you got to do this right here. It's better for her to stay home and take care. So one day he came home and he said, honey, if the Lord told you to quit, if the Lord told you to quit, he said, you quit. He said, you retire. So I had to learn that I couldn't just throw away money anymore. I had to learn that there was one income coming in, and I couldn't do the things that I used to could do. I used to say I, I, I couldn't get all those things that I desired or what I saw other women's or whatever with. Come on, I had to start doing my own hair. Some things I just had to do myself, okay? Because things had changed. But I'm going to show you the goodness of God. I didn't know he was going to do all this. I didn't know that. But I was, my son had seizures, and um, he had seizures. Severe. He had the kind you could have up to 200 of them a day. So anyway, praise the Lord. Because of that, they would not let me, they would not let him ride the bus, sit with him, sit, ride the bus because of the heat. But can I tell you, God is faithful. So it must have been after three months he was going to school, all of a sudden a check came in the mail. I said, is this in the mailbox? This, I think it was about fifteen hundred dollars. I said, "What is this for?" It was from bringing him to school. It was for bringing him to school every day, and I didn't even know that they was going to do this. 
because they had asked me, they said, can you bring it because we can't let her ride the bus. God had a plan that I didn't even know. It, God has a plan for our lives. So I was getting that. Amen. Hmm. So even though my son has a condition, God has been blessing us in spite of all of that. In spite of all of that. None of that may be none of your situation and none of that. But I'm just telling you, God knows your future. God knows your future. Hallelujah. But God wants us to come in a place where we have a proper relationship with money. We cannot let money drive us. Oh, no. We, oh, yeah, we, we, we let it drive us sometimes, but we cannot let money drive us. Because it would drive us to a place of poverty. That's where it would drive us. See, we always want to talk about the riches. And we always want to talk about maybe, you know, always trying to find a way. But that's not what God wants us to do. Everything is in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit revealed to us all things. He revealed to us all things. So God wants us to be uh, steward. He wants us to be accurate in our stewardship. The money that he gives us, everything that he gives us, he wants us to be accurate in. Scripture reminds us that God ultimately owns everything. Our job is to be responsible stewards because he owns everything. Hallelujah. I don't care how many millionaires it is, still, and whatever they, they invented, it was God that gave them the knowledge to invent that thing. It wasn't, come on now, it wasn't something that they just thought up in their mind. God gave it to them. Look, I'm going to just say this. Every pocketbook you carry, somebody gave them the idea on to make that. God, come on, because he said it's in our hands. It's in our hands. So he want to teach us, ladies, glory to God. Always oh, some things that's in our hands, some things that we are able to do that God want to turn that thing around for wealth. He turn it around for wealth. But we got to catch it and we got to get it. And sometimes we got to cry out to God to give us those ideas to give us the revelation, give us the understanding, because he made us that way. He made us that way. Hallelujah. He made us that way. And if we look at times the way it is now, especially in America, it's a lot of things falling because it left God. And everything else is rising up. But God is always in charge. He's always in charge. He's always in charge. He's going to take care of us if we know that. He's our provider. So he's going to take care of us. All right. So just get it in your head today that it's all about him when it comes to financial, economics, it's God. But we have to be good stewards. And I have to keep going over that because so many women, and it's men's too, it's just not good stewards. It's not that you don't have you just do not steward your money right. And it, it is. You just don't steward it right. The word of God teaches financial management. God bless those who make money through honest work rather than simple practices. God called us to pay back what we owe and to help those who help others. Pay back what you owe. Pay back what you owe. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, pay back what you owe. Whatever you owe, people, pay that back. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants us to be good stewards. You know why? Because we can't just go purchase something and then can't take care of what we got. Amen. We can't. Pay back what you owe. Hallelujah. That's a good steward. Hallelujah. We got to do that. Pay back what you owe. Saving money can help set up. For a future financial success, it can. It can. Save something. I don't care if it ain't but $5 a week. Oh, come on, $2, go on down. But save something. Say, I'm not going to mess with this right here. Because we never know what tomorrow going to be. Something is coming. It come, but we want to make sure, hallelujah, that we just saving something. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. See, I, 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 find I don't want to talk over, let me say, over my means or over where I am. I, I'm, I'm one of those people, I, I thank and praise God for the grace of my life 
but I always stay low. I try to stay low. And I try to tell you this because it's life things that we need to know, especially as women. I help a lot of women, a lot of women. But when I find out that the help that I'm doing for them, it can sometimes hurt them instead of help them. Because they're always expected that they can come back all the time to get help when they're making money. And they just only don't know how to manage the money they make it. So you have to come to a place in your life as leadership. You can't always give. You can't. We can't always do it. Tell somebody we can. So you have to do what? You have to teach your people how to manage their money. Manage your money. How to manage it. Hallelujah. And when you teach them how to manage it, they're not always running and relying on you to take care of them. Because something may happen that you cannot be able to do it. Because the church cannot furnish everybody. The church cannot take care of everybody. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Ain't nobody getting mad, is it? Y'all know I love you. Hallelujah. Oh, I love you so much. Uh-huh. Glory to God. Come on. So we have to be in that place now where in this season, we got to look at this money differently. Look at it differently. It's mine. It's mine. Because it's mine, that's why I do what I want to do with it. But when I know that it's a God thing, it's God provides. Now, Father, show me how. Show me what I need to do. Show me what I need to do. Glory to God. Show me how to do it. Tell somebody I need to know. And I keep saying that until I, the Holy Spirit says stop. A wise man thinks ahead. And that's Proverbs 13 and 16. He thinks ahead. Mm. The plans of the diligent leads to prosper. It leads to prosperity. And that's Proverbs 21 and 5. He says, sit down and estimate your cost. And that's Luke 14 and 28. Sit down. Come on, sit down and estimate your cost. Seeking you by that this week. See if you got it. You know how sometimes we won't pay our light bill because of this reason or that reason. And I know it might be an important reason. But still, we have to go with our, he said, do those needy things. Tell somebody to do the needy things. Be led by the Holy Spirit in your finances. In every area, be led by the Holy Spirit. Let him show you what to do with your money. So, I'm going to get back to my testimony. So, my husband, we was paying for two houses at the same time because the other house was too small. After our children, they began to grow up. My husband was doing that. And he was the only one working. He worked long hours away from the house a lot. But he did it. He did it till we find a buyer for the house. Amen. It was different sacrifices we had to make because of what he had to do. But we made it and still making it. Amen. And then when God called me into the ministry, guess what? We, I mean, it was still a financial thing that had to be taken care of all the time. But God still took care of that. But we had to sit down and reason together. Amen? Sit down and reason together concerning all of that. So that's what God is saying. Begin to think before you move. Think before you move. Look at your money, hallelujah, and think before you move. Before you say yes to this. Amen. Before you see that pocketbook and you want it, before you see those shoes and you want it, when you know you got about 100 pair of shoes at the house, you know, just think about that stuff. Amen. What you might need that money for. Amen. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. I'm being sweet in the message. Glory to God. So be not one of those that, you know, that make a vow, hallelujah, and can't keep that vow. Be not that. Amen. Well, I vow this. 
Well, if you bowed it and you bowed it, bowed it under the Holy Spirit, the unction of the Holy Spirit, then he said, wait a minute. I got it for you. But if he give it to you, then you go spin it. Or you use it for something else, believing that you have it by that time. Then guess what? You might miss out on it and you miss your vow because when you had it, you didn't do it. Amen. We all been in that place. Well, I make a vow, I'm going to do this. And then when that time comes, when you look back, you had it. You had it. But because you wasn't a good steward and you wasn't thinking that this is what I'm supposed to do. He said, don't make a vow and don't keep that vow. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, not just in money. It's other things that we make a vow in. But don't make that vow and don't keep it. If you make a vow, you keep it. Hallelujah. Mm. If you make a wedding vow, try to keep it if possible. <laughs> I say if possible. Hallelujah. Try to keep it. Try to do your part, ladies. Do your part. Glory to God. All right. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 8. But this I say, he quit so sparingly shall weep also sparingly. And he quit so boundedly shall we also bound thee. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. Hallelujah. So let him give not gurgily or, necess or of necessarily. For God loveth what kind of giver? He loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That ye always have all sufficiency. He's talking to us in all things. He said we will have what? All sufficiency in all things. Meaning no matter what the situation got, what the situation looked like, you got what you need. We got what we need. Ain't that something? No matter what situation we're in right now, he said we got what we need. That's if I'm in Christ Jesus. Come on, he's my shepherd. He takes care of me. Come on. Oh, my God. The word says, seek ye first what? The kingdom of God. And then he said, all them what? Will be added un unto us. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. And all those other things going to be added unto us. Everything I need is going to be added unto us. That's why we have to trust in the Lord with all our heart. Don't lean to our own, on our own understanding. But my understanding said, wait a minute, I got this to do. Or I want this. But the problem is more a want than need. Yeah, we, 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 we focus on the want more than need. Hallelujah. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 said, honor the Lord with thy sustenance. Honor the Lord with your sustenance. Hallelujah. And with the first fruit of all your what? Increase. Talking about your tithes. He said you do that for a reason. That your bonds would be full. And this blessed me last night. But this, this, this blessed me. And thy press shall bust open with new wine. Look at all this new wine we've been getting. Hallelujah. Something happened. When we put everything in the right perspective, something happened when we learn how to honor everything that God has given us. Something happens. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. You, 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 you didn't just attain that word, all the word and everything that you done got for the weekend. You didn't just attain that because it was spoken. You attain it also because you were doing something. You sold into something. Every th time you sow into a word of God, something happens. The Holy Spirit said to me the other night, before I leave here, I got to do something. Because that word blessed me. Y'all see what I'm saying? Every time. Every time. Right after that word, I put an offering in. 
I, I wasn't thinking about how much the offering was. I was thinking about, I was sowing into that word that she sowed. So every time you come in here, every time you sow in, something is happening. Something is happening. That's why we cannot be in a place where we control our money. Well, we are in control of it. Well, we love it so much that we hold back. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody come in here and they talking about a healing and you know you need a healing. Come on. You so into that because you're believing God for a healing. Tell somebody I'm believing God. I'm believing God. Hmm. Hallelujah. So you remember when Mary consecrated Jesus' feet with the oil? Even in that same time, do you remember that Peter? No, mm -mm. it wasn't Peter. I'm thinking of his name. He said something about the money, Judith, Judith. And Jesus said something to him about it. He, he knew that spirit was in him. But Judas didn't know what was there. And he didn't pay attention when Jesus said it. Because if he did, but he was predestined to do what he did. Hallelujah. So we can't get so caught up in money. We got to have a proper relationship. Tell somebody proper. Ladies, y'all appreciate this. Appreciate it, him. Yeah? Receive it and take it. Like good medicine for your soul. Because it means so much. And we can get everything in the right perspective. We'll see God begin to move on our behalf like never before. People be blessing you out of nowhere. Every time you turn around, there's something will be, you'll be being blessed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We can't just get caught up in the things of this world in this season. We cannot do it. Never, ever. Hallelujah. God don't want us to be in that place. We want us to be in that place where we be freely to give. Freely to give. Freely to give. When the call is made, be freely to give. Tell somebody freely. Hallelujah. But I don't know how much time y'all gave me, but anyway, God is good. Do not be hard-hearted or fight when it comes to your money. Hard-hearted. No, I ain't, I, ain't giving, I ain't giving all that. I'm not doing this right here. Don't do that. Amen? Hallelujah, don't do that. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because we don't want money to rule us. And that's Proverbs 3 and 9. Deuteronomy 15 and 7 say, If there be among you any poor, come on, any poor or one of thy brethren without, or thy gates in the land, thy land which the Lord God has given thee, he said, Thou shalt not harden thy heart. Nor shed your hands to the poor to tell us not to do it. Hallelujah. Jesus. See yourself not poor. Catch that. See yourself not poor. Because you're not. You're rich in Christ Jesus. You are rich in Christ Jesus. Come on. We don't have a poor attitude. Uh-uh. No. Uh-huh. We don't have that. But see ourselves in that place where we are rich. Oh, God, I would give a four-tenth to you. And this was Jacob talking. Then Jacob, made, he made a vow. He said, I would give a tenth. He was talking, hallelujah, to the Lord. He said, I'll give a tenth to you. And Jacob, he made that vow, and he made that vow, and he kept that vow. Tell somebody he kept it. He kept that vow. And Jacob vowed a vow saying, if God would be with me, and will keep me in this way that I go. I will give, oh Jesus, and will give me bread to eat and raiments to put on so that I can come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone, he placed the stone, made a covenant. He said, which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. And of all that thou have shall give me, I will surely give the tenth of it all. 
Hallelujah. He said, I'll give a tenth of it all. And we all know the story about Jacob. Amen. And he struggled too, didn't he? He went through some stuff, didn't he? But look at, that, look at the uh, outcome. Look at the outcome of it. Amen? Hallelujah. So God is faithful. Hallelujah. He's faithful to give. He gives us what we need. He provides for us. He provides for us. And as I said, I'm going to get ready to sit down. As I said, don't be in a place. Hallelujah. Don't be in that place. Stay faithful with your tithes and with your offerings. Stay faithful with doing with others that whatever you can do to be able to help. Stay faithful in those areas. Hallelujah. Don't let money be your God. Don't have an argument between, oh, God. Don't let money be your God. Because sometimes money becomes your God. There's another scripture that I had, and that scripture was, oh, God. You cannot, lo you cannot love God <laughs> and money. That's right. You can't do it. Hmm. So it seemed to me that money is our biggest enemy. If we don't know how to use it. It, 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 it can be a blessing to us or it can be a curse to us. It's a curse when we don't know how to handle it. And all of us been there. But when we come into that state of mind of understanding that everything I have, it doesn't belong to me. God gave it to me. Even if I work hard for it, God gave it to me. Because he gave you your health. He gave you your strength. He gave you your mind. He gave you everything. Hallelujah. You don't even belong to yourself. He made you in his image. Everything belonged to him. Your hands, your feet, your eyes, your ears, your mind. Everything belongs to him. And all he asked you for was 10%. And to be a giver. That's all he asks for us. We got a mighty God. The Bible tells us faith without works is dead. It's without, faith without works is dead. So I can talk to you about this. Amen. You got faith in this, but you got to have faith in knowing that you got to work the principle. That's why I said to you the principle works. The Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed, time, and harvest. Always. We are always have something to give. Hallelujah. Look at somebody say, I'm not lacking for nothing. Hallelujah. Come on, say, I'm not lacking for nothing. Ooh. Hallelujah. Can I get you to stand right quick? See, I'm not lacking for nothing. And I want you to say that with power. I, come on, I'm not lacking for nothing. Because I have a surety in my God. My God takes care of me. He takes care of me. He provides for me. I'm not lacking for nothing. Now, if you start saying that every morning when you get up, Something's going to get ready to happen. Come on, I got to speak this out of my mouth. I'm not lacking for nothing. I don't care what my situation look like. I'm not lacking for nothing. I'm not lacking for nothing. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. He's a good shepherd. He's a good daddy. He's a good daddy. He's a good husband. He is. It's our mindset on how we see things. Hallelujah. I cannot let money rule me. You cannot let it rule you. You cannot let it predict your future. A lot of people say, well, I got to have money to live. I got to have God to live. I got to have God to live. If I got God, I got money. Come on, quit saying that. I got to have money to live. 
God is bigger than money. Do you know that you can become a, an hour for night? You could just become a millionaire. Don't never, don't know how you got there. Somebody can die and leave a will with your name on it. Come on. Hallelujah. He says the way we talk is what we say. It's how we say it. You want prosperity in your life? Begin to speak it. Come on. Hallelujah. You want the abundance? Speak it. Works. Come on. Faith without works is. You got to work it. Tell somebody work it. Work it. Some of you got books in your belly. Work it. You got books. You got something inside of your belly that can help people. Work that thing. Some of you got crab with doing hair. Some of you sew. Work it. Advertise. Get out there. Start. Uh, oh, God. Hallelujah. Sowing seeds to, towards that. You want to be a, a sink, a, a someone that do the sewing? Sow to somebody. I mean, yeah. Begin to just sow it to them. Do something. But you got to work it. You got to work it. Tell somebody we got to work it. Hallelujah. I don't know about you guys, but I'm working it. I'm trying to work the principle. I'm working the principle and I say it out of my mouth. I live in the abundance. You live in the abundance. Hallelujah. Come on. And I believe because of this conference, because of the awe and the fire. Hallelujah. That, oh, God can give you a dream through the night. Somebody going to get a dream through the night. And the dream going to give you some ideals. Hallelujah. Witty inventions. Witty inventions is in, on, inside of us. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, God. It's inside of us. Glory to God. So we bless him today. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give him a hand, praise. Glory to God. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know why I'm hearing this here. I, I hear that. Oh, we shall see. Hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. I hear the Lord say you belong to him. You, you belong to him. And he said, don't you miss your season. This is a new season. It's some new doors finna open for you. I said some new doors finna open for you. You've been a servant. You've been a servant. And God see you. He see you. Hallelujah. I see it. I see another advancement. That's all I know. I don't know nothing else but advancement for your faithfulness. God know your heart. And there's some things God is working for you. He's fixing it. He's fixing it. Hallelujah. Oh, he's working it for you. He's fixing it. Hallelujah. Mm -mm. Oh, God, I hear him say, this is your season. Now count it all joy. He said, count it all joy. All that you have been through, everything that you've been accused of, he said, count it all joy. Count it all joy. You've been through some tests, but you walked through it. You made it through. Hallelujah. You made it through. You made it through and God has something. Hallelujah. You know, sometimes a person can be an establishment, but they don't even know what they is. 
They can be an establisher, but they don't even know what that is. It's in them to be. Hallelujah. But sometimes we let things not take us where we need to go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just speak blessings over every woman in this house. I speak blessings over your life. Blessings of increase like never before. Hallelujah. Blessings of increase. I see that, oh, when you leave this place, when you leave this place, I just want you to start saying, thank you, Father, for shifting my mindset. Shifting my mindset. Shifting my mindset on how I see myself, how I see my finances, and how I see everything else. We need him to shift our mindset. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I love him because he's able. Come on, I said he's able to shift. Mm -hmm. To shift. Glory to God. All right, I'm going to turn it over. Amen. <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory.